like some uh, headphones, that would be what we would be calling the back of the head. Hear it here. Uh, last year, uh, the, the people, the ABC, all those, remember all those shirts? All those guys get together and they decide new rules, they decide different ways to, you know, I don't know, make things difficult. And so now we have a rule where, where it goes. Thank you very much. Give me a hand. All right. Um, there's no uh, striking downward using the uh, point of the elbow. That's another rule that confuses people a lot. Uh, downward elbow is coming. The only illegal elbow is the elbow coming from the ceiling to the floor, or 12 to 6. All these other elbows, this way, that way, everything is good as long as it strikes in the fair striking surface. But, so these guys are, are, are cut, so we tell them 12 to 6, and these guys are, I mean, they're like, well, can I come 11 to, to 5? Yeah, yeah, 11 to 5, and, you know, I mean, they're always trying to get them like, okay, 11 to 5 is fine, but I don't want to see 11 to 45, I don't know, you know what I mean? We're constantly trying to, uh, trying to push the envelope, and uh, that's what they should be doing. Um, okay, no throat strikes. Oh, no grabbing the trachea, you can't see that the trachea. No clawing, pinching, twisting the flesh, grabbing the clavicle, kicking the head of a grounded opponent, kneeing the head of a grounded opponent, or stomping a grounded opponent. A grounded opponent is anything but his feet supporting his weight. So if he's got a foot down and one hand down, he's grounded. If he's got a foot and two feet and a knee or whatever, Anything, any combination of anything, but his feet supporting his weight makes him a grounded opponent. The only exception to that is if someone gets dropped and they uh, they fall kind of wedged in between the cage. Like, could you demonstrate that for me, Josh, right there? Like, let's say he got, let's say Josh was up against the cage getting beat up, and he got punched. Now he's wedged. The only thing preventing him from his butt hitting the ground and becoming a grounded opponent is the fact that he's wedged into the cage. We ask the fighters not to start launching kicks and knees to their face. Treat them as if they're a grounded opponent. Thank you, Josh. Thank you. No kicking with the kidney to the uh, kicking the kidney with the heel, but you can kick the butt or the back of the thighs, anything like that. Spiking an opponent to the canvas on his head or neck is against the rules. A spike is when you have control of your opponent's body and you drive that into the mat. Throwing a powder opponent out of the ring or the fence area, that's against the rules. Uh, if you're strong enough to do it, I'm impressed, but still it's against the rules. Engaging in any unsportsmanlike conduct, holding the ropes or the fence. If they're holding the ropes, we're giving them warnings. If it affects the position of the fight, the referee can take a point without a warning. Because let's say, let's say someone is gonna pick a guy up and body slam. Now the guy reaches out and grabs the fence and it stops the slam. I don't know how hard he was gonna slam him. I can't give him back that slam. That slam might have knocked the guy out. So I'm gonna have to take a point. Using abusive language in the ring or fenced area, attacking an opponent on or during the break, attacking an opponent who was under the care of the referee, attacking after the bell is sounded, flagrant disregard for the instructions of the referee, timidity, that's also, that's when guys are not engaging or running, it's against the rules. Uh, and interference by the corner, that also uh, counts. I saw a guy with a t-shirt on that says, I hate spilled bag of ice or something like that. That includes that when guys uh, drench the fighter. I know, that's, that's great, right? When guys drench the fighters in water and leave a big mess or spill a bag of ice, it's always the tired guy who ends up with a bag of ice spilled. Uh, so those are the rules, those are the fouls. The fighters are really patient because some of them have been fighting for years, and they've been hearing me read that every show for years. I'm sure they can say it with me. These are the voice commands. A lot of times you hear me telling the fighters things inside of the cage. These are the things that I'm telling them, this is what it means. When I say fight, that means fight. Time is running, the bout is started. If I stand them up, fight. It's time to fight. Fight back. Usually that's, I'm gonna tell a fighter that when he, uh, when I'm concerned about him, when I'm thinking about stopping the fight. He's taking some blows, he's taking some hammers, I, I, I'm concerned. Fight back. That means I want him to show me that he's in the game still. This requires activity to win the fight at minimum, show intelligent defense. Work. 
This is when the action step, either on the ground or guys up against the fence. When I say work, that means move towards finishing the fight, or for example, big shots, advancing position, and submission attempts. Stop. That means I'm about to break the fight, tell the guys to stop, I don't want them to move. Break, move away from the opponent. Those are two separate commands for a few different reasons, like if I want them to stop, and I want to get a good look at the position because I'm going to put them back there, I don't want them to move, or if I tell them to stop and I might just want to adjust their position, especially if we're fighting um, in a ring, which we don't do in the UFC, but referees sometimes will referee in the ring. Okay, here's the pre-fight check. Usually, um, if you watch UFC, you'll see this before the guys come in. They're, uh, you know, we are looking for uh, looking for grease, making sure that they have their safety equipment, gloves, making sure they have uh, their shorts tied, making sure they have a mouthpiece in. Uh, we're checking them for grease. There's a few spots where most of the athletes in this sport are top-notch athletes and top-notch competitors, gentlemen. Some people are always trying to find a way to push the envelope, so there's some places where guys have been putting grease, and that's what we're checking for, making sure they're not trying to make themselves slippery. Um, uh, hair, making sure they don't have any dye that's going to uh, make a mess all over the mat, and uh, that's about it. You can send them in, make sure their nails are trimmed, all that good stuff. Okay, here we're talking about position. Two great fighters. I like this picture. Okay, when, the reason um, why you always see us moving around in there and walking around is because uh, you can't make good calls if you're not in a good position to see what's going on. So that's what we're always trying to do is be in the optimum position for the situation to see the majority of things that are going to happen. This right here is as good as it gets. Uh, these fighters are in mirror stance. That means that, see, Frank is uh, southpaw at this point. His right foot is forward, and uh, Nagara has got his left foot forward. That means they're looking in the mirror. We call it mirror stance. It's like you're standing in a mirror. That's what would happen. And I'm right there. I'm at what we'll call a 45 degree angle to the inner space, the space between the two fighters. That way, when it's mirror stance like that, I can see everything. I can see the front of both fighters. That's as good as, it, as good as it gets for us. If one of the fighters changes, then I'm going to have to pick a, uh, a side, uh, and maybe I might pick the guy I'm more worried for, or uh, if it's a, a wrestler who's fighting a, box, a kickboxer, maybe I'll choose to be on the wrestler side because he'll be changing level, and most likely he's the one who's going to receive the foul. Uh, if the action gets a little stale, we stand the fighters up uh, for a number of reasons, uh, or pull them off the fence. Right here, the uh, Frank had knocked him down, but uh, he didn't want to follow him to the ground to finish up. So we brought it up to the feet, let the fighters continue. Injuries. Injuries happen. Yeah, that one, whoo. White meat, you know, open him up. Yeah, that, uh, we do, we have that there, Stitch. He's coming in there, God bless him. He's gonna try to stop the bleeding there. Man, he does a good job. Um, that's what we're mainly there for, is to deal with injuries with the fighters. Make sure the guys don't uh, get hurt any worse than they need to. Uh, here's a foul. There's an incidental foul. This is, sometimes these things happen without, uh, whether it's on accident or on purpose. And so that's when I'm going to get into some more boring stuff. Is Sometimes you wonder why we'll let a fight continue or why we will... Uh, why we might disqualify it. A lot of that is in the rules, and so it tells us what to do in a certain situation. For unintentional fouls with injury, if an injury is severe enough to stop the contest, the contest will result in a no contest or no decision. If stopped before the second round, that means it stopped it before, if stopped before the second round, in a three round, or the third round, in a five round contest. That means if an accidental foul, someone accidentally fouled someone, and the guy can continue, then it's no contest. If it happens after the second round, then we, uh, we go to the scorecards at that time. Intentional fouls. If an intentional foul is bad enough for a fighter to not be able to continue, 